You look really nerdy in those sunglasses. <laughs> kind of like you're a mad scientist. <laughs> Which know, I'm not saying you aren't. Like you kind of are. I think the majority of people who even watch these videos are going to be two things, nerdy and scientific. <laughs> I don't think your average stay-at-home mom gives a crap about battery acid, to be Probably frank. true. Thank you. That's a compliment. That means I'm on the right track here. You're All welcome. right. I'm, I'm in my element. I've always liked the nerdy guys, so... Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> guys, pay attention here. You yeah. gotta get this going on, this going on. You, you need battery acid. Yeah. You need Arm & Hammer batteries. Chicks dig this stuff. Pay attention here. All right. Video number three underway. Really quick recap. Video number one, which you can watch over here. We are trying to restore our battery bank. These are used batteries. And in video number one, I had a hypothesis that the first problem I needed to solve was getting the specific gravity of the electrolyte up. So I began by swapping out the battery acid, which I did do. And it resulted in a positive change in charging and voltage in one battery. The problem was I didn't know how to test whether I had really made a positive gain. So video number two, I'll link to it up here. I went on a crazy witch hunt to find someone or something that could help me both test and charge these batteries properly because I've only been using a small Schumacher Ship and Shore charger. That video, the net result was a positive test to draw current off of both of these batteries and they both check out okay. But the battery that has no new electrolyte added to it will not fully take a charge and is self discharging quickly in comparison with the battery which has had an electrolyte switch. That brings me to video number three. Now you really look like a mad scientist. <laughs> I should just like put this on my shirt and walk around with it and be like, watch out ladies. Yeah. <laughs> Touch it and get burned. Today, we're going to switch out the electrolyte in battery number two, and then apply a long steady charge to that battery to see if we get similar results to battery number one. So there's two nerdy scientists. One nerdy scientist is riding a bike. The other nerdy scientist says, hey man, where'd you get your bike? I like it. And he says, you're never gonna believe it. I was just walking one day and this hot girl rides by on a bicycle and she throws her bike to the ground and like rips off her clothes and she says, have what you want from me. So I took her bike. And the other nerdy scientist was like, good call man, clothes probably wouldn't have fit you anyways. See guys, Jesse does listen to the comments. He got safety glasses. Aww. <laughs> I let the safety sallies get to me. Some say you weren't humble. Some say I'm not humble. What's sad is they don't know the whole story. <laughs> they don't know the whole story. But I can tell that they have our best interest at heart. I can guarantee you that at least one time in this video, I'm gonna do something that's gonna make a safety sally freak out. So the battery acid from the last round, I am actually, or have actually neutralized using baking soda, which a lot of folks apparently knew, but I forgot from science class or whatever it was called, chemistry. I did find that out on the back of the container of the battery acid. It tells you to neutralize battery acid with baking soda. So we're all set to go. This is neutralized. So we're gonna go ahead and empty the battery. So this time I think instead of doing one, Two, three, let's okay. go on two. One, two, three. I kind of feel overwhelmed when you talk about batteries, even though I've been listening to battery talk for a while. Is that pretty normal? You should see me when you talk about babies. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on in my head is <laughs> Just like the first battery, I'm gonna empty two of these chambers and then rotate the battery and empty the third chamber. So it seemed to work well because I don't really want the battery acid going over this terminal. So that really kicked up any residual baking soda I had in the uh, bucket before, so I guess that's just good to know. All right, and now for the third and final cell. Another reason I probably in the future would empty this bucket and, and start with a clean bucket is in video number one I actually found out that in the bottom of the battery was a pretty good layer of junk 
Um, so I can't really tell what came out of this battery because I kept just putting other acid on top of the other one. So I guess in the future, I'd probably start with a clean, empty bucket. Thing is, you put it down in there, and now you got yourself a whole headache of problems. So don't do that, right? I think hands down, I prefer just wiping it with water. I don't know. This just creates a mess. Now I've got a mess to deal with, so. So in video number one, I found out that the capacity of these L16 interstates is actually just shy of a gallon and a half. So this battery acid quantity is perfect. It has a small uh, feeder hose, and we need to snip that off really quick, and then we can get to putting it in the battery. All right, let's go ahead and fill these one at a time. And this packet's actually pretty easy to use because of the filler hose. Um, and our goal is actually to fill only to the top of the lead plates because this acid is not charged it's going to increase as the lead plates charge they're going to release their acid back into the cell and if we put too much acid in we'll get overflow very good so all three cells are just over the lead plates there Electrolyte's been in the battery for just a couple minutes here while I did some cleanup and I want to see if my experience is very similar to that of the previous battery. When I changed the electrolyte out on the other battery, I got an instant voltage increase. Before we did the electrolyte switch on this battery, this battery was at 5.95 volts and we are sitting at 6.08 just with an electrolyte switch. Also worth noting, the specific gravity of the electrolyte that we've added to this battery is much closer to the fair category. That's a good sign. That means we're starting with a good set of electrolyte. The previous specific gravity was not even registering. All right, next step is to throw this on the charger for a few hours and try to get it through a full charging cycle. And I might actually put it through two charge cycles just to make sure I'm, I've got a good charge on it. Then we'll do a voltage check. And I also wanna check the self discharge. It's a new day and we have about an hour and a half to be productive before we got places to be. Go, go, go. We're always so busy. Yes, I feel like a scientist, like with a deadline. Is that possible? We don't have like job jobs and we're busy all day, every day from the time we wake up to the time we go to bed. How did yeah. that happen? I think we screwed it up. Somebody said that all this retirement business, we just have all this free time. Turns out we're busier than yeah. we've ever been. Turns out you just get in more trouble probably why it's best to just not retire. Where are we at with these buffs? All right, so we've been charging them alternating for two days and the short and skinny of it is that both batteries are taking a charge and both batteries are reasonably holding a charge. That means I feel like we've got progress. You'll recall the whole reason we started down this path was these two batteries were exhibiting signs of freezing. The last two nights we have been in single digit Fahrenheit weather and it has not been above freezing for three straight days. And these batteries are not exhibiting any signs of freezing. The acid that I removed from the batteries on the other hand is a block of ice. I've all but given up on the idea of trying to charge these batteries with distilled water in them because I don't seem to be able to locate a charger that's affordable that can do this task. So for now, I'm just gonna skip that and I'm gonna try to move to equalizing these batteries just to see if that uh, gives us any kind of measurable improvement in their performance. Today, this morning, we're gonna throw these batteries in the battery box and connect them up to the inverter so that we can run them through an equalized cycle while we're doing other fun stuff today. First, before we disconnect these batteries, we're gonna go ahead and flip the whole battery bank off. Unfortunately, because I don't have any other way to equalize these batteries, I'm going to have to just do some jockeying with my existing batteries in here to make room for those other two. I think there's a lot about solar that nobody talks about. And I'm not sure if that's just because they're trying to keep it on the down low or people aren't being honest with themselves, but our experience with a lot of solar stuff has been that you have to spend approximately half an hour to an hour every single day dealing with your power. For some reason or another. Time to risk death to get these things in. This is the part 
where you need probably need to hire three or four strong men who don't mind getting battery acid on them to get those lovelies in there. This is partly my fault for not having like the ultimate battery box, but uh, But it's timber framed. Yeah. Watch the video series on it. You know, I was thinking we might actually build like a six car garage for, for our batteries. batteries. That's a good yeah, idea. Yeah, I don't know where we're gonna put the With car. a greenhouse on the side? Yeah, we'll put a greenhouse in there and a loft. We'll put like a little kid's playhouse. And a, I'm not sure where we're gonna live. And a, and a wind, or a wind turbine? Yeah, and we'll put a wind turbine on there and a ram pump. A lot of planes out there today. I hear the sun brings out the pilots. So hopefully the airport will be busy and there'll be lots of planes to look at. I think that's your instructor flying over you, making sure you're getting ready so you won't be late. You know, he did say <laughs> that he does buzz bomb uh, students when yeah. they haven't flown in a while. <laughs> and I asked him if that was a guerrilla pilot school tactic and he said yes. All right, cable switcheroo is done. Battery bank is on. Current, amps, Yep. this should drop to zero. Okay, if it's, when it's not, open. Right. It's not open. Okay. As soon as I close the circuit, if we are getting solar, yep. you're gonna see the current start to come back up. Okay. So you need to always check this. Don't always just trust that the breaker's right. open. Right, let's see if the inverter will power on. Looks like we're getting some initialization. It says it thinks the batteries are pretty dead. I think for today, because of the equalization, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off our entire grid. So I'm actually gonna power everything down. So now there's no load on those batteries at all. Starting at around 11.95 uh, volts, we're gonna run this guy for a while and run it through an equalize. We'll check back in a bit. So for some reason, this charger jumped straight to absorb charging, which isn't even remotely close because I know those batteries are around 12 volts. So let's see if we can force it to start over. So I guess I'm Continuing to have problems. Doesn't want to bulk charge the batteries. I'm gonna go ahead and set this to equalize and we'll just see what happens. With this inverter, we actually have to turn the equalization mode on manually. All right, so now it's set to equalize. It'll go through a full charge cycle, then it'll go to its float stage and then progressively bring that voltage up to between 15 and a half and 16 volts over several hours. Look who came out of the trailer to enjoy the sunshine. Hey, Bugaboo. Hey, Bugaboo. Oh, I have to mark my territory. Oh, yeah. Step one. Pick it up and I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna cut it in the sun. I'm gonna cut it in the sun. There you go. Oh, did that look oh. good? Cutting it in the sun. So Alyssa is gonna jump into Master Gardener's class today. Yep. Her second round this week. What happened in round one this week? We learned how to clone plants by getting cuttings. So our speaker brought in some geranium plants and I confidently took a cutting off of it in attempts of growing it, only we don't really have the space. We can't really grow things in our trailer because there's no light in there and the artificial light isn't very good. And I left it in the cabin, even though the wood stove was on, it froze in here. So I'm pretty sure I already killed my plant. Cue the funeral music. Are you gonna have to tell anybody at Master Gardeners? I'll probably tell people or maybe I'll bring it in just to see if it could be saved. All right, so we wanted to test whether or not there was a surface charge on the batteries. So what we did was we disconnected everything and then went, went ahead and put a load on the batteries and we dropped all the way down to 11.3 volts in about 20 minutes. So what we're doing now is we've dropped the charge rate on the inverter charger to 30 amps total. We had it set to 80, which is probably a little high for only two of those L16s and we've now plugged it back in and set it to charge and it does look like it's going through the bulk charging phase even though it still looks like it's going a little too fast. If you get the feeling like we're getting nowhere, that's about what's happening. So in about 30 seconds we went from 11.3 volts to the absorb phase of charging. Which if you know anything about solar, it's not good. We've got other things we're going to do today so I'm just going to let this thing run. We'll check on it when I get back which will probably be well after dark. So it's about midnight and just getting home from doing other crazy chores around town and wanted to check on these batteries. And so uh, Alyssa actually got home earlier around 6 o'clock so the generator had been charging those two batteries for around 7 hours. And um, she said everything looked good, voltage was good. Uh, so I had her turn the generator off and just run them under load 
for just a little bit to see what would happen hoping that the batteries had responded well to that nice long charging session and it turns out they didn't do well at all within an hour the voltage on the batteries had dropped to 11 volts from what appeared to be a full saturation charge so that's not good at all. Uh, since I got home so late tonight, I ran the generator for around two hours to just put a little bit of juice back in them. It's really cold tonight and I don't want those batteries to freeze. So I'm gonna leave them out there tonight and just to make things work, what I did was I wired them back into the battery bank. So now all eight batteries are just wired together for tonight. So it looks like we're gonna be struggling with minus temperatures again. I think in that last clip I was a little delirious probably because I was extremely tired. So this morning taking a look at the status of our battery bank looks like our batteries are holding an okay voltage so I guess I'm just gonna spend more time diagnosing this stuff. I guess we'll take a look and see where those batteries are this morning after they've been tied into the bank all night and we'll see what we want to do as a plan of action for today. Last night when I tied the batteries together, our bank was sitting at around 12.3 volts and overnight with the heater and fans and everything running, we've dropped down to 11.83. I'm going to go out and actually do an individual voltage check on those batteries and see if they've come up at all or if they're stealing voltage from the other batteries in the bank. I could totally see how it could snow 7 inches because it's only been snowing for about an hour and we have an inch and it's coming down pretty good. Yeah. So hopefully that means we get to try out the snow pile. That'd be awesome. Be fun. Yeah. This is why nearly every video we do that spans more than about an hour, you see about four different seasons. Totally. Because you never know what the weather's gonna do. No one likes boring though. You and think? Here isn't boring. Oh, I'll finish that video tomorrow. It'll be fine. Oh, there's six inches of snow on the ground. Yeah, that's my time. And I have to shovel the driveway and do a bunch of other yep. stuff. Did I forget to mention? that you also have to clear the solar panels. All the solar panels. Oh, you wanted to get solar while it's snowing. Oh, yeah, that doesn't happen. Hey there, batteries. Haven't seen you in a couple hours. This looks like somebody wired it together at midnight at know, two right? degrees below zero. Looks yeah. like a rat's nest. That was fun. Here. So we're just checking the voltage of each battery. Uh-huh. I just want to see where they're at in relation. This battery doing the best of them all ironically huh, this one that's good so i'm freaking confused right now because so it's almost as if those batteries are fine they're not bringing them down the bank it's almost like the inverter charger isn't doing its job i don't know i was gone uh, yesterday and i don't have time to sit around and play cards with my inverter charger because i have a life and so i don't know what happened when we were gone it's very possible that the inverter charger had a little hiccup or bobble or something and so instead of fully charging the batteries it decided it would just go to multi-stage right go to float and just sit there all day yeah which is never going to get these batteries charged i mean in theory at that charge current it should take probably i don't know seven hours to charge them you're telling me that when you got home you turned the generator off which puts it on battery load and within an hour the voltage is down to 11 point something yep so well, also, the generator was running for at least eight hours when we were gone, and when we got back, it was still running. And if it was working hard at all, it probably would have been out of gas. Yeah. Therefore, it probably wasn't working very hard. You have to become a battery babysitter, plus an inverter charger and a generator babysitter. Fun job, right? Only when you babysit batteries, they're not going to take care of you when you're older and change your diaper and stuff. No! Oh. So, you're really not getting much of your investment. But they charge your <laughs> iPad, and that's kind of the same thing. I guess I'm just running into all kinds of like confusing stuff about these batteries. I don't, I don't even know what to do at this point. I feel like I'm going to have to like rewire a bunch of stuff. What I wanted to do was, was charge these through an equalized cycle twice and then let them sit and just see if I could, you know, see any measurable difference in the ability for them to not self discharge. Um, I guess I just don't have time. I don't have time for that. Oh, there's no, I don't, I don't even know that that's ice. It could just be something like a film. It could just be a film floating on the surface because it looks very liquid to me. The takeaway is that these batteries have been sitting out in at or near zero degree weather for three nights and well below freezing weather for four days. 
and they're not frozen. So that is progress. It's hard to tell at this point because I didn't at midnight want to deal with all this garbage. I want to go to bed. Whether these batteries, the two that I've been working on, are just stealing juice from the rest of the bank and bringing themselves up, bringing the rest of the bank down. So I guess if I put the whole entire bank today maybe under a heavy generator charge and just run it all day long and try to bring the batteries up really high. Well, for home we can hear any bobbles, so. Yeah, well, no. So sit here and babysit yeah. it. And then maybe check the voltage later tonight and just see kind of how they're performing. Doesn't feel like I'm making much progress. Yep. It feels like I'm running in circles chasing two batteries. So I had this desire to try to isolate these two batteries and try to play with them and figure them out. And then of course at midnight last night I thought, well, we'll just come out, we'll move our inverter cables over to the six batteries that we've been using otherwise. And our cable's not long enough, so we ended up having just to tie everything together to make it all work. I just don't know. Like, I feel like we're doing it wrong. Like, we need to have this massive battery box that's easy to get to, yep. and, like, just the right amount of cable, and the batteries need to not be so heavy. And <laughs> What we're going to do is try to charge the entire bank today. We're going to run the generator for a while and try to get them all the way up to a full saturation charge and then run through an equalize. Let that run, that's gonna take a long time. Mm -hmm. And then, maybe, we'll kinda of see where we're at with battery voltages. We may disconnect these two batteries and let them sit with no load on them. I'm not sure how we're gonna do that because there's not quite enough room in here to, to move the batteries around to, to get these close enough so that we can hook them up isolated. Just run the generator and we'll check back later. We'll yep. go make snowman or something. Mm -hmm. 